Today, I welcome to my little interview corner, Pia Guerra. Pia Guerra is the artist on Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man has been a great uh, graphic novel in the early 2000 years. And now it is also a TV show. Pia, um, great that you are here. That's the first thing. Thank you for having me in. This is really quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's start with with why the last man it is far back from today that you have started drawing why the last man i think it it came out from 2003 to 2006 about that uh it started in 2002 in july and ran until january of 2008 so just you know about seven years yes yeah, a little over six years I, I, i'm i'm yeah something like that six years sure <laughs> How, how was it um, wh when you heard that now finally the TV show will be um, reality? Uh, it's a big relief. Uh, we've been waiting for this for a really long time. There was a company that uh, held on to the had, uh, held on to the development of it for 10 years. And this is, I think this is something we all learned is that if you're getting an option made, don't sign a 10 year contract <laughs> if you want to see anything done. So uh, once that was uh, cleared, uh, then we, uh, then it was another several years, like three or four years, five to figure out the next, who is going to be the next studio to pick it up and then getting all the paperwork to figure it out. And then the pandemic hit just as things were starting to get go into production. So it has been a long time coming and we're very happy it's finally out. It looks great. Have you been uh, somehow involved in the show design like, uh, like some of the artists are? When we first saw the first three episodes and the pilot, we, uh, we got some notes. And like, like we, they asked us, do you have anything you want to offer? And, and yeah, we just Brian and I kind of ran through it and and offered some notes here and there, but it was just really good. And I was like, there's not much we can say. This is brilliant. And I think it has a nice pace to it. Uh, it's it kind of there. It gives itself time it needs to to tell a story, which I really like. It's not trying to cram an entire 60 issue series into a, a two hour movie. So I'm very happy about that. And they're also getting to add new things and update it, which is fabulous, I think, because it's it's been a while and so much has changed in our in, in just social um, things about and conversations about gender that um, it's a, it's great that they're they're tackling those that we didn't really get a chance to to kind of confront a lot of these issues with the book because we were so many other things we were dealing with, and so they have a wonderful writing team, and they're just asking all the right questions. It's just I'm so happy with how it's turning out. Do you know how many of the books the TV show covers now in the first uh, in the first season? From what I've heard from Eliza, she wants to go fifty to sixty episodes. So pretty much like the, the series with 60 issues she wants to do 50 to 60 episodes so hopefully we're looking at five or six seasons that would be lovely there's 10 episodes each season um fingers crossed <laughs> it's a lot of ground to cover there's so much there so yeah i think that as much space as they can to tell their story that'd be great um you were telling me about the pandemic uh, well everybody was hit by the pandemic so isn't it kind of weird uh, because the the comics and so the show also is about pandemic so seeing something you have written as fiction like 20 years ago and now it comes uh, to reality in reality yeah um, I, it's I think we we're all kind of laughing at, up until the pandemic about how much um, has changed and like with the Me Too movement and all these different cases and the conversations about trans rights and, and like it's like this show couldn't be more better timed. It's like all these things are happening and it all is relevant to what they're talking about. And then the pandemic hit and it's like, are you kidding me? Uh, so this is, uh, it is pretty amazing. Uh, but at the same time, I kind of think of it as it's something very similar happened with the book. Um, when we were starting it, we were kind of, we had a whole kind of idea of how it was going to be. It was kind of be a little edgy and dark and, but then the, then 9-11 happened. And I think a lot of what happened and how people process and how Brian and I processed that event got into the book. And like, and I think a lot of readers uh, found a way to kind of process their own feelings about that event through the book, through these characters. So I, it, it feels like okay, there's this big giant global event that happened during the book. And now there's a big global giant event happening to the show. I think it's kind of a weird, 
I wouldn't say it's a blessing, <laughs> but it's sort of like a, a little nod from the universe going like, uh, good luck. So we'll see. Maybe maybe this this uh, series is a way for people to process what's been happening in the last year and a half, because I don't think everyone's really fully absorbed what's going on yet, like how much, you know, has changed as a result and how, uh, like, just the grief alone. Uh, we just keep, we're so concentrated on surviving from one minute to the next that uh, it's, it hasn't really hit us the, the, just the sheer magnitude of this event. Funny wise, the, um, the pandemic shows seem to me uh, very um, en vogue in the time of pandemic. So your uh, Canadian fellow Jeff Lemire with Sweet Tooth, which is also pandemic, just got his TV show too. And so yep. it seems it seems to be the thing at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just what's what's uh, this sort of has been like the idea of a pandemic has been building for quite a while. I mean, ever since SARS, uh, which was almost 20 years ago now. And so how that affected small cities and like it almost became a full blown pandemic. Uh, and so this has kind of been on our minds for a long time. And you see movies like Contagion, which, you know, were, were stemmed from the concerns of, of SARS. And we know we've been learning more and more over the last two decades about how these things develop. And we've been hearing for the last two decades, experts saying, okay, we have to start preparing for this because this is going to happen. This is going to happen at some point and we have to be prepared to, to respond to it. And I think we all knew this uh, in our minds or like subconsciously anyway, we knew that this was an issue. And then when it finally happened, we got to see how the worst response you know, results in the worst outcome. So yeah, it's all in our, it's all, it's just been hovering there on the, on the, on the sidelines for a long time. And yeah, now it's, now it's a problem. Now it's something we have to deal with. So yeah, <laughs> that's how um, it works. Is there planned everything, um, a, a new story, probably a short story from Why the Last Man? Because um, the end in the book also is already set in the future, but there could be some more short uh, tie-in stories that could be written. Well, I know uh, DC kind of wanted to do more kind of uh, spin-offs of Why the Last Man, but we, but Brian and I talked about it and like, that's not what we wanted to have happen. This is a complete story of beginning, a middle and end. And that's it. That's uh, how we, we, we've always set, set out for that from the beginning. And so we don't want it to go into kind of after Watchmen territory. I mean, I know there could be some really amazing things come out of that, but uh, if anything, the TV show, We'll probably have an opportunity to do a little bit of that. They'll get to do that. They're bringing in new stories and new ideas, new characters. And so they get to experiment with that world some more. But as far as beyond that, I don't, I don't really see the need for it because it is just a straightforward story. I guess it's, it's like doing a sequel to Casablanca. Do you really need to, to know more? <laughs> you don't. It's, uh, it's, that's how it's set up. In Germany, most of the books have been sold out through the years and now Panini will come up come up with um with a new edition in the end of, of the year. So it wasn't possible to do it right when the show starts, but uh, we will be very close out with new books, with a new editions. And that's a, that makes me really happy. I'm really glad that the, this book has still managed to find uh, an audience 20 years later. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty stunning to me. Did Brian or did the two of you from the beginning uh, know how, it would end how the story should yes. end or was there a process that changed that uh there was always room to make changes if we needed to but the uh but heidi's boss karen wanted wasn't sure that there was 60 issues of story in this concept so she was really skeptical that this would be you know would make it that far so she asked brian to create a bible for the whole run basically a 60 issue bible Uh, like an outline of what was going to happen to prove that yes there are 60 issues worth of story here and so he did that and uh, there was halfway like near the beginning there um, I had some ideas about a character and so I threw it his way and I was like look I don't know if you want to do anything with this um, but there's like I'm imagining like he's a master of escape should he go up against a master of bondage is there something that we can do that we you know go towards his kind of 
his self-destruction that we're obviously seeing right now? Is there something that somehow this could be like a, a catharsis for him to, through this? Like, I don't know what's the, uh, you know, how you the, this would work for you, but here's some drawings. And, uh, and he said, uh, okay, let me get back to you at that. And I just thought, okay, that's an idea that he might use in a background or something. But then a couple months later, he came back. It's like, well, you remember that idea you pitched about, you know, the bondage art master? And like, yeah, it's like, well, I was able to fit a three issue story arc into the into the this time stream <laughs> with that. And I was like, what? And so, uh, yeah, so it, there was room to make changes. Uh, to add things, but if overall we knew where it was going to go. I didn't know all the details. Uh, I usually, I preferred to have Brian tell me, um, like when we were starting each new arc, he would give me an outline for that arc. So uh, like this is what's going to happen in these next four issues. These are the key elements. And then if, if I had any ideas, I'd throw something in there or some bits of trivia that I remember. And, and so, uh, and then he would work those in, those notes into the script. So uh, I didn't know how the last two episodes were going to go until they showed up in my e email box. And yeah, that was, that was pretty heartbreaking, and I, uh, but really wonderful at the same time, because it was a really greatly written story, and I'm very grateful to have been on it. Um, you did most of the of the artworks, but also Goran Sutsuka did uh, some mm -hmm. of that. How how did he came into the uh, how did he come into the to the whole thing? Well, we had a uh, Paul Chadwick, Goran Suzga, and uh, Goran Parlov, and that was basically through Heidi. She she found them, and it was to just kind of give me a hand because I was really slow because I was really new to uh, to working in comics. This was my, technically my first big break, and so I was really overly confident about what I could pull off and then uh, as we were going into like year two three it was like okay I need some help and uh at one point it was uh it was one it was to catch up on on how far I'd gotten behind so then Paul came for that later it was I had to get some minor surgery so I needed some time off for that not long but it was enough to to kind of get caught up uh so then we had uh one of the Gorans there and then later we had uh, Brian and, or sorry, no, um, I'm trying to remember if there was, what was happening. Okay, yeah, the, I got married. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we asked for a few weeks so I could, uh, we could take the family someplace and have a, a big wedding and have fun. And, and uh, yeah, so that was a, the big help. And it's like, I really appreciate them being on the book. They did an amazing job. And uh, I've always talked to Heidi about like, you know, I just would love to have people to come on to kind of give their interpretation of this universe and go crazy with it. And uh, yeah, these, these guys really did some amazing things. I love what they did. Thank you for taking the time. And um, I hope the show will be uh, a big, big, big success. Thank you. And thank you everyone for checking it out. I hope you like it. I think there's some amazing performances here that uh, I mean, Ashley Romans is amazing. Ben Schnetzer is amazing. Diane Lane is in this. And I am, I'm just stunned every day the more I learn about the, how this production is going. So I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. It's a fun ride and I hope you have a great time. <laughs>